Okay, so I flipped um, the image round. Now, I have done some violet um, detail in here, um, but I've kept it quite subtle. I might come in and do a little bit more here, and I've made this darker in the eyes especially, but you know, I really like the way the blue sings on its own. So until I've got this mask off, and I start doing the background detail of all the sea and everything that I'm going to work on. I won't know whether the balance against that silver is okay. So this is a bit distracting. So I'm going to leave the violet for now because I'm quite happy with how it's looking. And we're just going to come in here now and add some highlights into this, especially around the edge of the hair around this side, because what we want to do sh very shortly is get this mask off. Uh, which is quite exciting, isn't it? And then we can start focusing on the kind of final bits, really. I'm moving on to the background. The great thing about coming back in with um, highlights in this way is we work from light to dark and then back, back to highlights. And then what you can do as well is if you find that you maybe have hit it a bit too hard in areas with your white because you'll see here what the white does over some of the violet is that it makes it a very light um, shade of uh, purple and we don't really want that so what we'll do is we'll once we've got these highlights all done we'll come back a little bit here and there with the blue again just to reintroduce that blue back in right so I'm going to carry on doing some highlights Put some highlights back into the hair here. Uh, a little bit on the face, not much, because quite like the way it's looking. Um, and then we'll be able to rotate this back round and get this final mask off, which is very exciting, isn't it? And also what we will do when we've done that, which I'll explain to you in the next section, is we're gonna nail this down. Now, normally in solvent-based paint, you'd use an intercoat. I've got this EFX PSAG 2050. It's um, AG2050 Autograph Optifilm. And um, basically, it's kind of an interco. I think Createx make one similar as well, but this one's been around a bit longer. And, and I've tested it, and it works really nicely. And it's completely water-based. You can even thin it down a little bit with water, which is what I've done on a test piece I've tried already. So I want to nail all this detail down, um, and it'll go through my other airbrush, or even through an Eclipse, which will spray even more material but this is the HPCH, so it goes nicely through there. And all it does is it just protects this artwork because when I take this mask off, I wanna be careful that I'm not touching this anywhere with my greasy fingers. And I need to be able to wipe it here and there, especially when we're doing all the background. So once we've got uh, this bit of highlight detail done, we'll remove the mask here, here and here, uh, and then we'll lock it down and then we'll move on to the background detail. Okay, so as you can see now, I've removed all the um, rear masking off the back here and I cleaned this off with a little bit of solvent cleaner just to make sure there was no greasy marks left on it. Being careful not to touch this area, obviously. And then I also removed the uh, lettering stencils across the bottom and that's worked out quite nicely, except the 16th here, Colin's birthday date because I'm going to do some chainmail detail here and I want to leave that area masked off. But this is fine to, uh, to unmask this area here. And I'm really pleased with how this has come out. Not quite finished yet. And then as you can see in here, I've, uh, I've laid out um, the rest in peace pops to be lined up with the actual horizontal bit across the bottom because that's how it sits inside the mini. Uh, so this is very straight, so this has got to be lined up across here. It looks a bit odd because that's actually uh, sort of a bit of an optical illusion because this is sloping up that way, but it is actually straight. So yeah, no more violet because I'm absolutely loving the way that looks. It looks much more violet actually as I look at this on the monitor uh, compared to what it actually is. It's very much like a, um, a cyan candy blue. Um, really happy with it, really love the way it's coming out. A couple of highlights. I've done some highlights in the hair, so I'm going to work those up a little bit around here. Obviously, because I've taken off all this uh, masking now, these hard edges need softening off just a wee bit. Um, they're going to have a little bit of a glow around the edge. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting highlights in here that like the ocean and some very soft lights coming through, and then working up the bottom with the chainmail detail. 
and also here's the other section so if I scooch this along slightly you'll see um, this sits like this in the mini it is actually the airbag obviously you can see that because it says it in big letters um, and I've just been testing a little bit of paint on there and that's all working nicely so the uh, the actual design will carry across the top and the bottom there so yeah I'm really pleased with that it's going great so I will move on to the next section uh, which will include as well um, doing a bit of a, um, a, a dark blue shadow around here and around here very similar to what I've done at the bottom here which will just uh, bring this out but I'm going to leave these in the silver background so when it's cleared over it'll be uh, be the same color as the actual material because what I'm going to do on here is darken all this background in um, so it matches in also with the car so I thought that would be quite nice so there you go looking great very pleased with that very pleased with that indeed hope you're enjoying it so far stick with me for the next few bits okay so it's chainmail time now what I've done to be able to cut this nice and uh, symmetrically uh, I've actually done this with a scalpel by hand because I don't have a plotter and you may not have a plotter so let's try and keep it like that but I do have some A4 sheets of Art 2 Ultra Mask. Now I use this all the time in the past when I've been airbrushing. It's very similar to the Oracle paint mask that um, Rob supplied the stencils for me on. But what I decided to do uh, was I printed um, from my visual that I've got where the chainmail needs to go. So that is this bit, this bit here at the, at the um, over Colin's left shoulder. Yeah, um, and then this bit here is going to be this little bit in here and then this bit here will be that second section that curves up like that at the end and it has a hold it for the fan in the mini yeah but when I uh, printed this put this with the printer the printer ink was just rubbing off a bit like when I mentioned to you earlier about printing on the um, transparency yeah well I'd never tried this in the printer I thought it was quite a good idea actually because you can uh, if you don't have a plotter which I don't you can print anything and then you can cut it with a scalpel and, and then use this as a mask because it's really good stuff. But the ink was coming off, you can see a little bit there. So all I did to fix that problem was, remember when I nailed down um, the artwork with this water-based intercoat? This is um, AG Optifilm by ETAC. All I did was I put some of that in the HPCH and you can use the Eclipse, uh, something that will put out a good amount of paint. And I gave this a few coats and then I um, just came over that with the hair dryer and just dried it off and it was good I protected it enough so that when I was cutting you know and I, I wouldn't smudge all this off so that's what I've done there I've just very I've just made a, a rough guide of symmetrically where all these will sit um, and like when we did Colin's blocking stenciling in the beginning I'll be able to take this mask off come in with a micron and then actually do this because I did do a test piece um, and I'll just show you on here uh, where I had, you can probably just see there, I freehanded that stencil detail. This was a test piece that I was working on for some ideas and colours and things. And although I could get the detail, uh, I just really wanted this to be absolutely symmetrically perfect before I come in and do the freehand with the micron. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with this bad boy here, which is the HPCH. And that gives us a little bit more paint than the micron and a little bit more air pressure so we're gonna just come in here and dust in we're actually going on directly onto the silver here so it's a little bit difficult to see but as long as we give it a nice little bit of build up We'll be able to take this stencil off and then we'll be able to go in with the micron and, and freehand come in with the blue do all the shadow in and hopefully it'll be good to go right so i'm going to get on with that for a second and i'll be back with you shortly right so i've done uh, some uh, wave reflection detail i'll just show you that carefully um it's difficult to see in this light but i've got the waves the breaking light coming through and the wave as if they're going off into perspective so they're getting tighter and smaller and I've, um, I've put a bit of 
white highlight around the lettering and what I'm going to do now as you can see here I'm going to start laying in some of the blues uh, and I don't think quite as dark as this but just to to match in the rest of it so we've got a nice kind of like blue sea and just see here if I flip the camera around a little bit that's my iPad and that's kind of my sort of visual reference of a underwater lighting so I'm just going to go ahead now and um, put a few bits of dark on here I might sound a bit muffled but I've actually got a mask on today so <laughs> and can't be too careful you know even with water-based paints you should still always wear a mask I've got one of those type of surgical masks on that we have to wear down the shops you know What I'm doing here is I'm going to get the, the sort of um, the sea bed, I suppose, really is what this bit is, with the reflections on it, sort of merging into this idea of the the chainmail here. Now I don't know if you remember the other day I did mention to you that I dinked this needle on my on my wrist here. Um, I have actually ordered a new needle and it should be coming today from Alex at the Airbridge Centre because I am a little bit concerned that at this stage now with this detail that I want it's not actually giving me 100% accuracy and I've got to go around and freehand all these little guys in here like this and this needle is just not cutting it so I might have to work on some larger parts I don't know if you can see there on the camera but it's not too bad the needles not too bad I mean you get nice tight ish detail in there and I'm gonna put a wee bit more trans um, EFX transparent base because I think we're hitting the the blue a little bit too too soon there so we can work that detail but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm, the needle should turn up today around about lunchtime I guess in the post um, so I'm gonna work with the micron a little bit on these sections where I don't really need as much super duper duper fine control and the needles not damaged enough that it's gonna do that one of the other things as well which is really odd is that you over years of having struggled with water-based paint in its infancy really um, when it was just nowhere near as good as it is now and now I mean I, I've, I've chose ETAC on this because I like EFX um, but I under, from what I understand I do have some but I haven't actually tried it yet the uh, Createx illustration uh, colors are pretty good I do have some of that and I do have some of that reducer the um of the 4012 so I, I don't know i mean i i, I like the way this um e-tax sprays to be honest but i may give it a go and see how that works because it's good to keep a you know an arsenal of different tools when you're when you're painting and all you're looking to produce really is the best work that you can do um, obviously normally for e-tax especially efx and for the createx um uh, illustration range um, from what I understand you know a lot of it's designed so it can be erased so if you're working on like a clay board or any type of illustration board but obviously working on something like this which is much a harder surface to work on and to paint on uh, you need to put a little bit of additive in just to help the paint along And although you can, you know, really, really, really reduce it down, um, it's pretty close to how a solvent-based paint would work. But there's just something different, isn't there, about how a solvent melts down? I guess it'll never be exactly the same. 
but it's pretty close. Alright, so I'm going to uh, press on here with some detail. The needle's not too bad. I mean, it's, beha it's behaved well enough to produce all this work, so it's just at this stage, this is a lot more obviously repetitive and graphic looking, isn't it? Um, so it's, uh, I've got to be able to get in there and, and have super duper duper detail like a sharpened pencil or a, or a sharp, you know, a technical drawing pen. I want the airbrush to behave like that. I don't want it to be naughty. Right, what I'll do is I'll work backwards towards these highlights and, and sort of fade like that, leave the highlights showing. Oh, a bit of a blowout there, that's a bit of a shame, isn't it? That's all right, we can cover that up with a little bit of white. Well, just to show you, I'll leave the, I'll leave the accidents in. I mean, things do happen, because I got the paint super duper reduced, and if the air pressure is a little bit too high, you know, that's what you're gonna get. Right, so I'm gonna plod on and fix that little mistake. Um, like I said, leave the mistakes in, we're all human, aren't we, you know? You only learn by making mistakes. Definitely the most important part of learning anything is, is doing it wrong. Then you know how to put it right, don't you? Okie dokie, so I am gonna press on here for a short while. Uh, work up some of these blues, we'll try and work up some, I may leave these till the new needle arrives today. And hopefully by tomorrow, um, this should be just about finished. So I'll, uh, I'll report back to you later. Right, okay, so a bit of good news uh, since I spoke to you last time. The, uh, the needle turned up, which is great. Uh, and as you can see, I've been able to start working on uh, this piece here before I commit to doing the main piece with Colin's portrait because I wanted to um, try it out a little bit. Okay, so basically it's finding the right way to paint these. I tend to hold my breath a lot when I'm doing detail. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the underneath first like this. shadow underneath there. Okay, so um, a bit of good news, the new needle came for the Micron. So what I've done is I've taken the secondary piece um, uh, that sits next to the airbag on the left hand side um, as kind of like a, 
a practice, not, not so much a practice piece, but uh, one to build my confidence for um, getting into this section here. Because doing this detail, oh my goodness me, if you've done airbrushing before and uh, you've tried not to hold your breath when you're painting, it's almost impossible. So I'm just gonna grab the Micron. So as you can see, I'm a, a, I've, I've got a little bit of test piece here. Of, this is actually um, a little bit of, um, a cut out a little piece of just photo paper that you would print on because it has a nice hard repellent surface. So it's kind of good to test when you're doing on something plastic or metal because the paint will repel like that in the same way, yeah? So like I said before in the past, it's all about the right consistency of thin down paint. You can see there we're getting some nice tight lines, look. Nice consistency of paint and slow build up, not too much because as soon as I do too much like that, I'm going to get a little bit of uh, blowback on there and we don't, we have to literally just pull the needle back the tiniest of amounts. Right, so let's go in here. Oh, it's like precision surgery, honestly. <sighs> I'm wearing a doctor's mask as well. Phew. It's quite difficult for me to get really close with the camera really close to me here to um, I've got to concentrate for a while to really focus on this detail so I'm going to finish this section here and then I'm going to do the um, the lighting bit on the top section here um, so it matches uh, the lighting on the other piece and then I'll be able to move on to the actual uh, piece where Colin's uh, portrait sits so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, chisel out some more detail in this Whew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very tough work, uh, but it's going to be worth it. I'm sure you'll agree it's going to look fabulous when it's done. So I'll get back to you a little bit later. Stay tuned for more. Mm. 
Right, so as you can see now, we've done a lot of detail uh, on this. We've done this um, this section first. I think you'll see that the detail on there has come out really, really nice, really cool. And uh, we've moved on to the main piece here. If I can just lift that and show you, it's a bit difficult on the camera, but can see we've got and you can see that silver showing through so it's almost like a candy so when that's cleared which we're going to be almost at that stage soon you can see that um, we've got that micron needle working really nice you can see I'm working up now on this side here towards the sort of ocean bit and on this bit here so the next bit is that center bit and then right up to the top there that bit goes here and of course this bit sits in here like this so you've got that nice continuous chain mail effects all across the bottom there loving it really pleased with it looks fabulous i'm really really happy all i've got to do now is if you look in here the actual date which is one and six for 16 that's still masked over and that's because i wanted to do all this dark chain mail detail in here and then overlay a couple of coats of the blue to push it into the same sort of family of colours as, as Colin. And then I'm going to remove those very shortly. And then I'm going to work on this blue area here of the seabed and up to the top. Um, yeah, so let's crack on with the next bit. We're very, very nearly there, which is great. Okay, so we've done lots of work on the chainmail uh, we masked off the lettering with our letters and we've done if I turn it at an angle you can probably see better because the way this is going to work which is going to be really nice is that that is still silver where it says pops and the other text on there um, and you can't quite maybe quite see that kind of lovely pearlescent blue happening where the spotlight is and that's because you can see the silver through it and also where you've got the shards of light so what will happen is as the light hits it that will actually change slightly look which is really nice almost is like water it's, it's lovely i love that so all i've got to do on the the main section here is very 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 lightly i think just dust in some blue just to knock that silver back a wee bit and make it match a little bit because it's very stark at the moment and also I'm just working on this piece here so you can see there all the chainmail detail is now done and I'm just working in the where the light will I've got to be careful how I hold this because I don't want to really grab where the paint is but if I slide this across you'll see that's going to go on here like this uh, a bit difficult to show you on the camera as I'm struggling to hold that so I've got that section to do next. Incredibly happy with the way the whole piece has come together. I cannot even begin to tell you. Wonderful, this has been a wonderful uh, project and uh, it's, 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 nearly, it's nearly finished. Uh, we're nearly at the end of the road. So I hope you like it. Uh, stick around for the very last piece. And then I've got a friend of mine coming over soon who will be doing the final clear coat and then we can deliver it to Damien and Alan so I'm very excited about that so almost there last bit to do I'll catch you on the next one Okay, so the pieces are all finished. That sort of links up in there like that. And they're all cleared now, so you can see there, we're getting a nice effect on that, on that pearlescent. Does just needs a wee bit of a polish because it hasn't had that yet. And this is the finish straight off the, off the gun, which actually is pretty good. I think Clive made a great job of that. Um, so that's that section there. And you can see on here that we've got the same effect going on with a nice pearlescent blue showing through there because of the silver and that lovely detail that we spent all the time doing at the bottom. Just a couple of things that need nibbing out, but that'll be okay when it's polished. 
perfect you can see there that effect at the bottom that we were looking for when we first did it and here where it, the light hits it especially now it's all cleared so yeah wonderful really pleased with it really do love it and i do hope damien that you get many years of pleasure from it it's been an absolute honor Okay, well, thank you for watching. Um, if you've got this far and you've watched all the many hours, then uh, I do appreciate it. It means a great deal to me. Um, and I hope you learned something from it. Or if you just enjoyed watching it, that's wonderful too. But before I go, I've got one thing left to do before we finish this film. It's the final section. And I wrote something um, for Damien, which I want to read you now because it's important for the last section um, of this film. And he saw this letter when he opened, well, just before he opened the final pieces um, that I'd airbrushed, he'd seen the poster. And I asked Alan to show him this letter. And he read it. And this is what it says. Dear Damien, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for believing in me and asking me to create this artwork for you. It's been a spiritually uplifting experience for me and I feel I've gotten to know your dad a little in the process. I'm looking forward to seeing a photo of the pieces back in the mini and of course I kept the colour scheme a surprise so maybe in the future we can do other pieces to match. I have a couple more surprises for you yet and by now you should have seen the large image I edited from the photo you sent me. I hope now you understand why the Airbridge piece took a little longer than usual because I wanted to recreate this photo for you and your family, of course, I worked on this first. I do hope my art goes a little way to adding some comfort in the future. As you sit in the driver's seat again, I want to say thank you for choosing me to assist with this very personal and important project. I'll speak to you very soon. All the best for now, Beach. So before we see the last little piece of footage, um, there's only one thing left for me to say, and that is um, look after yourself and those close to you. And I'll see you next time, right here online. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.